Okay, so we're going to start talking today about series. The difference between a series and a sequence is that a sequence is just a list of numbers and a series is going to go back and add them all together. So after we find the list of numbers, then we're going to add them together. That's what makes this a series. And so they've defined it as a sum of the terms of a sequence. So let me remind you that that word sum just means to add. Okay, so anytime we're talking about a series, we're talking about taking the terms of a sequence and adding them together. It's really the only difference. Okay. Um, our notation for a series is a sigma. It's a Greek letter that looks like that. It's called a sigma. That's what we're going to use for our sign. Okay, and it can be written in an abbreviated form, so we don't have to write it out every single time. So anytime you see this sigma right here, know that that means that we're going to be adding a lot of things together. Okay, you're going to use this again in calculus, that sigma notation, when you get something called a Riemann sum, and you'll take a bunch of rectangles and sometimes a bunch of trapezoids, find the area, and add them all together. Okay, so you'll see the sigma notation again when you get to Riemann sums. Okay. All right, this is what sigma looks like right here. So I'll go through kind of what all of those pieces mean. And it's going to lead to this thing down here. And this one down here is what we call the expanded form. Okay, so anytime it asks you for the expanded form, this is what it's looking for right here. So sometimes it will ask you to find the sum, which means to add all of that together. And sometimes it will ask you for the expanded form. And when you're looking for the expanded form, you're just looking for the first term plus the second term plus the third term. It's not asking you for the total sum. It's looking for all of those pieces added together. Okay, so here's how it works. This number down here will tell you which term to start with. Okay, so I'm going to start with, on this one, a sub 1. I'm going to start with a sub 1. The number on the top tells you which term to stop with. So I'm going to stop with, on this one, a sub 4. So I'm going to add together a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. And that's going to give me my expanded form over here. Now, to find a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4, I'm going to use this that's right inside here. It's what we call the summand, and it's just a formula like you had yesterday when we were finding a sub 6 or a sub 80. It's the same thing. Okay, so to find my expanded form, I'm going to start by finding a sub 1. So 3 times 1 gives me 3, plus 2 gives me 5, so 5 would be the first number in my expanded form. Then I'll do the same thing with 2. 2 times 3 gives me 6, plus 2 gives me 8, and 8 is the second number in my expanded form. And then I did the same thing with 3, and the same thing with 4. And again, for expanded form, you leave your answer just like that. Okay. Alright, so let's try one together. I'm going to take a look at number 1. Okay, so for number 1, I'm going to start by finding a sub 1. It told me to start with my first term, a sub 1. So a sub 1 is going to be 2 times 1 minus 3, which gives me negative 1. So my first term in my expanded form is going to be negative 1. Okay, let's find a sub 2. a sub 2 will be 2 times 2 minus 3, which gives me positive 1. So my second term is going to be plus 1. Okay, my third term, a sub 3, will be 2 times 3 minus 3, which gives me 6 minus 3, which gives me 3, so plus 3. And my fourth term is going to be 2 times 4 minus 3, which gives me 5. Are you starting to see a pattern? Okay, when you start to see, yeah, when you start to see that pattern in the numbers, you can go and use it if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and finally find a sub 5. So a sub 5 is going to be 2 times 5 minus 3, which gives me 7. And I'm going to say that's plus 7. 
And again, I'm going to stop right there because it told me to stop at the fifth term, at a sub 5. Okay, and that right there is my answer for the expanded form. Now, it's not necessarily a number of terms, although this one was. It is literally that you want to stop at the fifth term. Okay, you want to stop at a sub 5. Okay, any questions on number 1? So you don't that's right. You don't have to add them up when it's asking for expanded form. So on the back side of the worksheet, we'll talk about what it looks like when you add them together. Good. Okay. okay. I would like for you to take a second to try number two. Now be careful because notice that number two starts at your zeroth term. So you're starting at a sub zero. Start at a sub zero. Go to a sub four. Okay, give number two a try. See if you can find your expanded form for number two. When you're ready, check yours. No hurry, but when you're ready, check yours. Okay, so notice that we only went to the fourth term, but I had five terms that I added together. Okay, so that top number is not necessarily the number of things you're adding together. It just tells you which term to stop with. Okay, so because we started, excuse me, because we started at zero, we had an extra term in there as well. Okay, a similar thing is going to happen on number four. Which term are you going to start with on number four? Two, yeah, you're going to start with two because it's got this little n equals two right here and go up to six. So you're not necessarily going to have six terms you're adding together. You're going to stop at a sub six. Okay. Okay, let's go the opposite direction. So on number five, I'm going to take the series that they've given me and I'm going to write it in sigma notation. So now I'm going to go backwards. We're going to assume on these that we're starting at a sub 1 unless they tell us otherwise, which they usually won't. Okay, so I'm going to assume that this is my first term and my second and my third and my fourth and my fifth. Okay, so my sigma notation, which I'm going to go right over here and write just because I write big. I'm going to start with my sigma, my little Greek letter. It looks a little bit like that. I'm going to say that I'm starting at the first term, so where n is equal to 1, and I'm going to go up to my fifth term. So I'm going to have a 1 on the bottom and a 5 on the top. Okay. Uh, this be sometimes you can see the pattern. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Is sometimes you can see the pattern, like this one is 2n. Sometimes you can't. So I'm going to go ahead and work with it as if it's an arithmetic series, and I'm going to use my tricks that I had yesterday. So I'm going to say this one is arithmetic. I have a d value of 2. I also have an a sub 1 value of 2. Okay, so plugging into my formula from yesterday, I'm going to say that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Okay, so if it's not one that you can just look at, you can always go back and use your sequence. And I'm going to say that a sub n is equal to 2 plus 2n minus 2, which just leaves me with 2n. And that's what's going to go over here inside my parentheses. And that right there is my sigma notation. Questions on that one? Okay, let me give you a second to try number six. Number six is a little bit different. First of all, is it arithmetic, geometric, or neither? 
geometric on this one. Good, okay? It's geometric, and your formula is going to look kind of funny. See if you can figure it out first, and then we'll talk about that one. So give number six a try. See if you can find that one. When you're ready, check yours and notice that something in my formula has disappeared. And that's what's funny about this formula and why I wanted to look at this one. If you're working with a geometric sequence or series and your a sub 1 and your r value are the same, then you have bases that are the same being multiplied and you can add your exponents. Okay, so I'm going to think about this as being 3 to the first power. So that's going to give me 3 to the 1 plus n minus 1 power. And what's going to happen to my 1s on that? They're going to cancel out. That's right. And so that's where I get just 3 to the nth power. Okay, it only works when you have bases that are the same. So it only works when your a sub 1 and your r value are the same in a geometric sequence. Okay, that's the only time that that little trick will work. Okay. Any questions on that one? Okay. okay, let's jump down and look at number 8. So on number 8, they told me that I'm working with 4 plus 8 plus 12, and then it wants me to add up the numbers to 100, but it has not told me which term 100 is. So I'm going to need to find that. Okay, I'm going to need to find which term number that is. So I'm going to start off working it just exactly the way I normally would. I'm going to say that my first term is 4. So I've got my sigma, and I'm going to start from n equals 1. Okay. Is this one arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. arithmetic, good. I'm adding 4 each time. So adding 4 and adding 4. So I know a sub 1 is 4, and I also know that d is 4. Okay, so plugging into my formula, I'm going to say that a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1 is going to give me 4 plus 4n minus 4. So my a sub n value is 4n. What I need to do is find my term number for that 100. So let me remind you that n, that variable, stands for the term number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 100 and plug it in right here for a sub n as if that is my last term. Okay, so I'm going to take my 100, plug it in for a sub n, and then I can find my term number. Okay, so if 100 is equal to 4n, what's my n value going to be? 25, that's right, good. So I now know that 100 was my 25th term, and that's going to be my last term number up there. Okay, so find your term number 
kind of going backwards. Plug that number in for a sub n and find your n value. Okay, any questions on our sigma notation? Okay, so listing all of these out is perfectly fine if you're finding the sum of four terms or five terms or six terms. But what if you're finding the sum of 300 terms? Okay, you are not going to want to list all of them out and add them together, and I'm probably going to make a mistake doing that. Okay, so flip over on the back side, and I'm going to give you a better option. All right, so the better option is going to be to use one of these two formulas. Okay, so if you are looking at one that is arithmetic, I'm going to use this formula. And if I'm looking at one that's geometric, I'm going to use this formula down here. Okay, so two more formulas that if you're making some kind of formula sheet so you can find those quickly, these would be two good formulas to put on there. Okay, so let me run through the pieces of this one first. Okay, so I'm going to find S, which stands for a sum of the first however many terms. Okay, so they're going to tell you how many terms. N is still the term number. I'm going to plug it in here, and I'm going to plug it in here for my formula. Okay, so that N value is still your term number. Then I'm going to find the first term, and I'm going to find the last term, and then I'm going to divide by 2. Okay, so on number 10, they've given you all of the pieces that you need. It's just letting you practice plugging them into the calculator. Okay, so let's get all this plugged into my formula. So on this one, I'm finding S sub 20. They told me to work with an N value of 20. All right, then I'm going to plug 20 in for N in my formula. I'm going to work with A sub 1, which is 3. And I'm going to work with a sub 20, which is 98. So I'm going to add together my first term and my last term, multiply by the 20, and then divide by the 2. Okay, and this is what I was talking about, that if you don't put this in correctly, your calculator will only do the 98 plus 3 divided by 2. So I highly recommend in separate steps. So I'm going to do 98 plus 3 times 20 divided by 2. And that's going to give me 1,010. You can. You can. Yeah, you can use alpha F1 number 1 if you want to. Good. Okay. okay, let's jump down to number 12. So on number 12, I have to kind of find all of that information first. So on 10, it gave me all three pieces. On 12, I need to find the three pieces. Okay, so on 12, I'm going to start by saying that my n value is going to be 24. I got that from the top of my sigma. Okay, so this number up here is going to be n. All right, then I also need a sub 1. So to find a sub 1, I'm going to plug in 1, and that's going to give me 7. Okay, and the last thing that I need is my last term number, which in this case will be a sub 24. So I'm going to do 6 times 24 plus 1. That's right. That gives me 145. Good. Okay, so I'm going to plug all of that into my formula. So I'm going to say that s sub 24 is equal to 24 times a sub 1 plus a sub 24 divided by 2. Okay, so back to my calculator. I'm going to add first. I'm going to multiply by 24, and I'm going to divide by 2. So it's almost like they're finding an average of your first term and your last term and then multiplying by the number of times that you use that number. That's kind of what they're doing when they find the sum formula. Okay. All right, last one that we're going to work together. Let's jump down here to a geometric. All right, and I'm going to work number 20. So 18 and 19 are kind of like 10, 
where they've just given you all of the information that you need to plug in. Okay, but let me show you how it works when you're given a sigma. Okay, in this formula, I need a sub 1, I need r, and I need n. So those are the things that I'm going to look for. Okay, n is still my term number, and that's going to be the number up there on top of your sigma. So on number 20, n is going to be 8. Okay, I need a sub 1, so that's going to be 3 to the first power, which is just 3. Okay, now on this one, I can kind of see that 3 is going to be my r value. But you may have somewhere you can't. And if you can't, just go ahead and find a sub 2. And then you can see what you're multiplying by. So in this case, I'm multiplying by 3. I'm going to also have an r value of 3. Okay, so with the arithmetic formula, you don't have to find d. But with the geometric formula, you do have to find r. So watch out for that. Okay. All right, so plugging into my formula, I'm going to have s sub 8 is equal to a sub 1, 3, times 1 minus r, also 3, to the 8th power, divided by 1 minus r. Okay, now this one's one to be very careful with your order of operations. Let me say first that this 8 does not have anything to do with the 1 over here. Okay, so what we're going to want to do first is 3 to the 8th power. So I'm going to do 3 to the 8th power. The 8th power only goes with the 3. Okay, then I'm going to do 1 minus that. Then I'm going to multiply by the 3 in front. And then I'm going to divide by my denominator, which is negative 2. Oops. And I divided. Ah, it didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> I pushed the wrong button. Now I divided by negative 2. And that gives me the 9,840. Again, just be very, very careful with your calculator and order of operations. It doesn't always do exactly the right thing. Okay. Let me remind you one more time again, too. If you're trying to raise a negative to a power, so like if you had an R value that was negative 3 on this one, be sure to put that inside parentheses before you raise it to the power. Okay. Be very careful with those negatives and exponents on your calculator. Okay. All right, any questions on that?